Hello, this is John Gardner of the Mechanical and Biomedical Engineering Department of Boise State, and this module is about simulating discontinuities. Uh, specifically, we'll spend time looking at uh, dry friction, also known as Coulomb friction, or um, the specifically the stick-slip phenomenon. And uh, and and it is a a challenging um, phenomenon to to simulate in computer systems. It really causes uh, causes computer simulations a, a lot of trouble. Um, so let's talk about the simplest um, one we might look at and the sim simplest manifestation of this. So imagine a block on a dry surface and the block has mass m and we'll say it's about two kilograms and there's a coefficient of friction the, so the friction force can be represented by mu and we'll say that's about 0.8 and that the, the force is sinusoidal in nature and so we want to we want to simulate this, uh, see what its velocity is. We want to find the velocity of this block as the force pushes and pulls back and forth in this sinusoidal manner. Um, and I think you realize that um, if the amplitude of the force is small, small meaning below the, uh, the, the maximum friction force, mu n, uh, then the block's not going to move. It's just going to sit there. Uh, but at the minute the, the, that that force goes above the threshold then it'll start to slide but then since the force is sinusoidal it'll fall down and the block will stop again so you'll see you should see this sort of stop and go motion of the block um, if the force is large enough so uh, I created a simulation and this is the screenshot of what the block looks like um, and rather than going to the PowerPoint let's just um, let's just pull it up so uh, this is the one I want to look at so this is um, MATLAB simulation. Let me pull, um, yeah, so I got got uh, PowerPoint out of the way. So here's the MATLAB simulation. Here's my sine wave. Here's my gain block. So this is 1 over m. We integrate uh, acceleration. You get velocity. Um, you feedback velocity through this Coulomb friction. So, so this is how MATLAB says, okay, here's a discontinuity. Um, and we'll call it Coulomb and viscous friction. If I double click on this I can see the threshold value of what they called the offset was the mass uh, 2 kilograms times acceleration of gravity so now I have the weight times the um, coefficient of friction 0.8 and since I didn't specify any viscous friction we'll make that zero so it's strictly just the dry friction here uh, so so this this block is this functional relationship between velocity and uh, and uh, and force the force subtracts from the sinusoidal forcing function and and this is the nature of the simulation if I double click on the sine wave I see I can set the frequency and the amplitude um, amplitude of 10 newtons sounds good um, now we can do the math that threshold um, maximum friction force is 2 times 9.8 times 0.8 turns out to be about um, somewhere around 15 between 15 and 16 newtons so if I run it at 10 newtons it's not gonna um, it's not gonna move uh, so here's the velocity coming out on this line and it goes to this scope I'll, I'll tell you what this other scope does in a second but let's just run this simulation and I uh, let's see what I what my configuration parameters were here so the simulation parameters I had set up I've already been messing with this. Let's go back to the default. So the default is this variable step size algorithm that we've seen before. Apply that change. Bring my um, simulation back up. And if I hit run, it uh, we get a little chime in the background here, and and uh, I got this. I just upgraded my MATLAB, by the way, so it's now it's the very latest version. So it might look a little different, but what's saying is that at, at the time 3.16 times 10 to the minus 27, we've hit 100 or 1,000 consecutive zero crossings um, and says, you know, something's wrong here. So um, this is the same problem we had earlier, right, in our homework problem. I'm not going to try to diagnose this. We, we messed with this for hours. Um, I'm just going to jump over and say, you know what, let's just do a fixed step solver. We'll do, um, uh, I think I'll start with 1 times 10 to the minus 3, so a millisecond for a time step. And we'll run, and it ran that quickly. There's that chime again. Um, and if I double click on the velocity scope, 
I get um, exactly what I would expect. Here's uh, this, you can see the, the vertical scale, it goes plus or minus five, um, and it looks like it's at zero. And I said it looks like it's at zero because it really isn't. If I were to um, zoom in on this, use the vertical zoom here, I see that, oh, look at this. Now I'm a, these first tick marks are 0 0.05 meters per second, so that's five uh, centimeters per second, right? So that's not, you know, that's not not chump change. It's really moving. Um, and you can see it's chattering around here a little bit, isn't it? And if we were really just can completely zoom up, you'd see that there's just a huge amount of action going on here. The simulations kind of all over the map, even though we know from the physics it shouldn't be doing anything. So I put the second scope on here, and you can see what I did here. I put a multiplexer here, and I'm, I'm, I'm sending three signals to the scope. The forcing function itself, the velocity, and then the Coulomb force. And um, when you put multiple signals onto a scope through a multiplexer, the traces come out in different colors. And you can go in and figure out what they are, but I'll tell you right now. The first one's yellow, the second one is um, it's magenta, that hot pink color, and the, th and the third one is cyan. So if I double click on this scope, oof, looks really busy. I'm going to maximize the screen so you can see as much as you can. And you see there's this magenta line in the background. You can see a little see a little hint of a yellow line. Let's do an auto scale. And that's not helping us much. So obviously there's an awful lot going on here. Let me um, just zoom in on this like two to three second range here. Uh, okay, so the yellow line is the first line. That's the forcing function. Remember I said it, it, its amplitude was 10, so it's coming off a peak here at 10. The middle line was the velocity. It looks like we're not doing anything in velocity. That's good. Um, but the third line was the actual friction force. So look what's happening. The friction force uh, should be, remember what it is, the friction force is whatever value it is required to maintain the constraint as long as that requirement isn't beyond the threshold. Well, we're not getting that, right? We're just getting it flipping back and forth from its two extremes. Remember I said that the, the threshold force, the maximum friction force is about 15 and some change. So here's positive 15, now it's minus 15, and that's what these, that's what this dense looking graphic is, is that, is that it's just constantly jumping back and forth at a really, really high frequency. Um, clearly, Clearly, this is what, what we call uh, an artifact. It, the, it by no means re rea uh, reflects reality. It's reflecting the, uh, the, 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 the numerics of the problem. Because there is no way in this um, block to represent that, that condition that I talked about where the friction force is whatever value it needs to be. And we can we can you know change the simulation parameters all we want. We're not going to get very good behavior out of this. Um, it it does get a little better when we actually do let it slip. So let's go to the amplitude of 20. Uh, run it again. Um, let's start with the just the velocity um, one. So here here we have a, a graph that looks about right. So um, we now that now the forcing function is breaking the block free and so the velocity is free to go up for a while and then the, we're coming on the downside of the sinusoid and then it gets stuck again. Stays stuck and then pushes the other way. So that's pretty much what we'd expect. But again if you zoom in on it and really take a look at what's going on here we'll see that um, well you know it's still got that sort of that sort of chattering going on here. I mean, the, this block should be stuck, and it's not. So this is plus or minus um, one centimeter per second in these first tick marks, and it's it's still bouncing around quite a bit, and and a little bit random too. You know, you can see there's not a lot of pattern here. There's some repetition, but it's not sure isn't what I wanted to see. Um, and if you look at the other scope, um, you see that while the block's in motion during this period of time when it's not stuck, the simulation seems to be behaving itself. Here's the friction force at this flat level. Here's the forcing function doing what we'd expect. Here's the velocity. Um, but it's during the stuck period, we're back to the problem we had uh, in the previous simulation, that it's just chattering like crazy. Um, just going back and forth. Again, not reflecting reality. So, um, 
So that's really a limitation of this block. There's really not a lot more you can do. If 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 you're simulating a system that's moving back and forth that doesn't get stuck, it's not a bad block. Um, it's still not perfect. So um, so we've worked with this quite a bit and um, and played with it with it, with the homework problem. So I'm not gonna I'm not inclined to to have you mess with it a lot more than to say that you know it's it's got its limitations. So. Um, so we're going to um, end this video right now, and um, I'm going to ask you to um, be familiar with this. If you, if you weren't following this, um, go back and mess with it. Um, and the next video picks up part two, which is, um, which is using script files to do a better job. So that's it.